Hey everybody, this is War Boss Fitz. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do another how to play video, go over a army from one of the one page rules game systems, and then we're going to play a battle report with said army at the end. Remember to like and subscribe and leave a comment. It really helps to push forward OPR gaming into the gaming YouTube zeitgeist, especially now because all of what Nottingham has done with their Age of Sigmar game, maybe we can throw those players some lifelines and bring them over here to OPR, where things are still fun. Today's army that we're going over is the Vampiric Undead. Yes, we are going to switch back to the Age of Fantasy for a couple weeks, because I have made some cool stuff that I want to show off for everybody. And this week's 3D Creator of the Week is One Page Rules. Because the One Page Rules Patreon is coming to an end with their Vampiric Undead releases. It's not over yet, so there might be a few things added to this army next month or the month after, whenever they finally finish the Patreon releases for these guys. But they've got such a large catalog of undead models that I figured, okay, I could throw this out now, mostly because I want to show off the cool army I've made for them. So you know them, you love them. They're the reason we're all here. One page rules. So we're going to start off like we start off with all the armies with the special rules. Now there are a ton of different types of characters in this army. We're just going to go through all the special rules, not single anything out. As far as character rules go, you'll know it when you hear it. And then we'll talk about them and we'll do a little bit more in depth when we get to those characters. So starting off, we have Blood Chalice. This model and its unit get regeneration. Breath Attack. Once per activation before attacking, roll one die. On a two plus, one enemy unit within six in line of sight takes one hit with blast three and AP one. Corpus Pile. Once per activation, pick one friendly unit within six which gets regeneration next time it takes wounds. Cursed Lodestone. Once per activation, pick one friendly caster within six, which gets plus one to its next spellcasting roll. Frightful Gaze. Once per activation before attacking, pick one enemy unit within 12, which gets minus two to its next morale test. Insatiable Hunger. This model and its unit gets furious. If it already had furious, then it gets extra hits on unmodified rolls of 5 to 6 instead. March Order. Once per activation before attacking, pick one other friendly unit within 12 inches, which may move up to 6 inches. Protected. Attacks targeting units where all models have this rule count as having AP-1 to a minimum of AP-0. Reap. Enemies that roll to block hits from this weapon take one additional wound for each unmodified result of one that they roll. Seduce. Once per activation before attacking, pick one enemy unit within 12, which must take a morale test. If failed, you may move it by up to six in any direction. Spawn. Once per game, when this model is activated, you may place a new unit of X fully within six inches of it. Rising Dead. This model counts as having ambush and may be deployed up to one inch away from enemy units. Undead. This is the big one for the army. Whenever this unit fails a morale test, it counts as passed instead. Then roll as many dice as remaining models slash tough with this rule. And for each result of one to three, the unit takes one wound, which can't be ignored. Unholy Brazer. When taking a wound, roll one die, and on a six, it is ignored. If the wound was from a spell, then it is ignored on a two plus instead. And Warning Cry. Enemy units can't be set up within 12 inches of this model when using Ambush. So many of these special rules correspond to very specific things in the army. Like the Breath Attack, I know is going to be on the Zombie Dragon. I'm not sure if it's on anything else. It could be. We'll find out as we go through. But that's going to be like the Zombie Dragon is literally breathing fire or necromantic magic, whatever you want to call it. Our character abilities are going to be Blood Chalice. Insatiable Hunger, Frightful Gaze, March Order, Seduce, it's, there's a lot of them. We'll, we'll talk about them as we get to the characters and the way that you can use those. The main one here on this page that every model is going to have is that Undead Rule. That Undead Rule, 
I just want to stress that it says that whenever you fail a morale test, our last version of this rule says that you would always pass the morale test and then you would have to roll regardless. In this new version, you roll your morale test and you only do the undead rule if you fail. This way you can completely ignore all the extra wounds because you'll notice it's on a one to three, which is half of the dice, which means if you fail a morale test, you're probably going to lose half of your unit. And the wounds can't be ignored, so armor doesn't matter, regeneration doesn't matter, whatever kind of crazy rules you put on them does not matter. If you roll a one to three, you take that wound. So that's enough talking about special rules. Like I said, we'll get to them more in depth when we get to the units that use them. Let's go ahead and go to spells. Spectral Wind, one, target enemy unit within 12, takes two hits with AP two. Vigor, one, target friendly unit within 12, gets plus one to hit rolls next time it fights in melee. Dance of Death, two, target two friendly units within 12, they get plus two next time they advance or plus four next time they rush and charge. Deadly Gaze, two, target enemy unit within nine, takes one hit with AP four and Deadly three. Curse 3, target enemy unit with an 18, takes 1 hit with Blast of 9. And Invocation 3, target 2 friendly units with an 18, they get regeneration next time they take wounds. So they've got some standard offensive magic with Spectral Wind, Curse, and Deadly Gaze. They don't have any targeted spells, so you're not going to be able to pick out individual units with spells like some other armies that we've gone over or some abilities that we've gone over in Grimdark Future. This is Age of Fantasy. Things here tend to be a little bit more simple, but also things here do not generally have ranged weapons. That's why the spell Vigor, target a friendly unit within 12 to give them plus one to hit in melee, is great. This army has a whole lot of fours and fives for quality. Not very many threes, but they are there. So if you can get a quality three unit, hit them with this spell and make them hitting on twos, they become devastating. But mostly you're going to be going from a four to a three or a five to a four, or even in some cases a six to a five, which is just a 50% increase with the hits there. You'll know it when you see it. Dance of Death is a really good spell too, because it allows your undead monstrosities to go faster than the enemy thinks they should. An invocation giving two friendly units regeneration are just always great, especially in the undead army. Because, you know, zombies stitching themselves back together. That should just, that should already be a thing, but it's not. But we'll talk about that when we get there. First of our characters is going to be the werewolf champion. 150 points, quality 3, defense of 4, hero, scout, strider, toughness 6, and undead. He comes with a heavy rending claw for six attacks at AP1 with rending. He can have the March Order and the Frightful Gaze. The March Order is where he can tell a friendly unit within 12 to move six inches. And the Frightful Gaze is where he can look at an enemy unit and they get minus two to the morale test. You can replace the rending claws with a heavy hand weapon for six attacks at AP2. He can't directly upgrade the unit that he's in because his two upgrades are targeted towards one other friendly unit or one enemy unit but he does have scout and strider so he's going to be able to get into the enemy pretty quickly and with six attacks at ap1 with rending in age of fantasy he is going to rip apart some people so this is going to be a on foot combat champion put him with some werewolves to make them just scary and werewolves are just pretty cool in general Next, we have the Vampire Master for 65 points. Quality 3, Defensive 3, Furious, Hero, Toughness 3, and Undead. They come with a heavy hand weapon for 3 attacks at AP 1. They can be upgraded with Insatiable Hunger, which gives this model and its unit Furious. And if it already has Furious, which vampires do, they get extra hits on an unmodified roll of 5 and a 6. You can give them a Blood Chalice, which gives this hero and his unit Regeneration. Frightful Gaze, which is the one where he can stare down an enemy, give minus two to morale. And they can also be a caster two or a caster three that allows you to get a hold of those undead spells. You can replace the heavy hand weapon with a heavy lance. Three attacks, AP one with the lance ability. And lance ability means that whenever you charge, you are going to be an AP plus two. So on the charge, this would be an AP three weapon. A heavy halberd, three attacks, rending at AP one. Dual heavy hand weapon for four attacks at AP one. 
a heavy great weapon for three attacks AP3, or a heavy spear for three attacks AP1 and counter. Now, spears are a big thing in Age of Fantasy. Pretty much every foot troop can use them. Counter is the ability for spears, which means that whenever that unit gets charged, like if something charges this vampire and he's carrying that heavy spear, this vampire gets to attack first. This is how we do shield walls or pike formations in Age of Fantasy. You give them spears and the counter rule. That way, the enemy has to walk through the forest of spear tips before they get into the enemy and start attacking. You can give the vampire master heavy armor, which gives them protected, which means that all the attacks coming in are at AP minus one. A hunting pet for warning cries, so no one can ambush within 12 inches of the character. And then you can give him a steed for fast and impact, a winged steed for fast flying and impact one. A Winged Terror for Heavy Claw, 3 Attack, AP 1, Flying and Toughness plus 3. Or a Zombie Dragon for Toughness plus 12, which will make it Toughness 15 at that point. A Breath Attack, Fear 2, Flying, Regeneration, 4 Attacks at AP 1 from a Stomp, and 6 Attacks at AP 1 from a Heavy Claw. So your Vampire Master is going to be a absolute terror on the board when you put them on a zombie dragon. Starting off with a quality three, it makes all those attacks from the dragon a quality three as well. And if you give them the insatiable hunger, all of those attacks are also generating new attacks on a five or a six. So if I have the points laying around or if it's a larger game, I love running vampires on a zombie dragon. Our next champion is the Skeleton Champion. Quality 4, Defensive 4, Hero, Protected, Toughness 3, and Undead. Comes with a Cursed Heavy Sword for 3 attacks, AP 1 with Reap. And Reap is the rule that if the enemy rolls a 1 to save, it counts as an additional wound. You can upgrade the Skeleton Champion with March Order. They can become the Armor Standard Bearer giving them fear plus three, and the fear rule means that when you add up however many wounds were caused in combat to see who won the combat, fear plus three adds in three. So like if the skeleton champion only caused two wounds total, fear plus three would mean that he caused five as far as figuring out who won the combat. And you could also give him Nightbringer for Frightful Gaze. You could replace the Cursed Heavy Sword with a Cursed Heavy Lance, with that is just a heavy lance with Reap. Cursed Heavy Dual Hand Weapons, which are 4 attacks AP1 with Reap. A Cursed Heavy Halibur, 3 attacks AP1 with Reap and Rending. A Cursed Heavy Greatsword, 3 attacks AP3 with Reap. A Cursed Heavy Spear, 3 attacks AP1 Counter and Reap. So all of their weapons are going to have Reap. And it doesn't look like they're going to cost any more points over a normal weapon. It's just an added bonus when you throw in the Skeleton Champion. He just gets Reap. You can upgrade them with a champion crossbow. 24 inches, two shot with rending. No reap on this though. And you can give them a skeletal steed for fast and impact one. And an abyssal beast for defense plus one. Fear one, toughness six, strider, heavy claw, six attacks, AP one. So something nice to do with this character is you can give them the army standard bear and you can sink them into a unit of skeletons. That's going to be your punch through squad because they're going to have a plus three to their number of wounds that they cause to see who want to combat. You could give them a crossbow and set them with some of your other ranged units, but this guy in combat is going to be where he wants to be. The reap rule is just going to be an extra additional fun rule to have. It probably won't come up as much as you think it will, but when it does, it's fun. Or you could potentially put the Skeleton Champion on the Abyssal Beast, but at that point they become Toughness 9 and can't go inside of a unit, so they're going to be alone. But Skeleton Champion on the Abyssal Beast with the Army Standard Bearer makes them a Fear 4 unit because those the Fear 3 from the Army Standard Bearer and the Fear from the Abyssal Beast does add together, making them Fear 4. This guy is just going to run around breaking open units, causing them to take morale tests potentially running things off the board or stunning things for a turn or two. Next we go to the Ghoul Champion. Wow, this is a lot of characters. 50 points, quality four, defensive five, hero, regeneration, strider, toughness three, and undead. Comes equipped with a toxin claw for three attacks with poison. You can upgrade them to become a caster one and give them frightful gaze. 
You can then upgrade them to have a Bat Beast, which gives them Fearless, Fear of One, Flying Furious, Toughness plus six, Deadly Fang with six attacks and Reap, or a Bat Dragon, four attacks, an AP1 from Stomp, Deadly Fang, eight attacks with Reap, Defense plus two, Fear two, Toughness plus 12, Flying and Furious. Now this character is either gonna be on foot as kind of a support caster, just to throw his single dice out wherever you want it to go, or it's gonna to upgrade to a Bat Beast or a Bat Dragon. Both of those are not gonna be able to let you sink into a unit, but you're not going to want to because those two things, the Bat Beast and the Bat Dragon, are gonna run around wrecking face. And with the natural regeneration on the Ghoul Champion, that also gives the Bat Beast and the Bat Dragon regeneration, which gives the Toughness 9 or the Toughness 15 a lot more staying power. Now to our last champion, the Drained Leader. 30 points, quality 5, defense of 5, hero, toughness 3, and undead. This guy is pretty basic. 3 attacks from a hand weapon, no AP, nothing special. He's just got a stick to beat somebody with 3 times. You can upgrade them with Nightbringer for Frightful Gaze, Necromancer for Caster 2, Master Necromancer for Caster 3, or Corpse Master, Fear plus 2, and he gets to spawn Stitched Zombies. So remember the spawn rule is once per game, when this model is activated, you may place a new unit of X fully within six inches of it. So this guy in particular can spawn 10 stitched zombies once per game within six inches of him or her. You can replace a hand weapon with a dual hand weapon for four attacks, a great weapon for three attacks with AP2, a halberd for three attacks with rending, or a spear for three attacks with counter, and you can give him a hunting pet for a warning cry. This is a newer added character, and my mind immediately goes to the Corpse Master, allowing this character to spawn zombies. So you can put it in a unit, march forward onto an objective, and let's say that you want to move off the objective, somebody's within charge range. Oh look, I'm just going to drop 10 zombies on this objective to hold it while my unit moves off of it to go do something else. Also giving his unit fear plus two in the process is a great addition. Or you could also use them as a cheaper caster if you want to take a caster 3 for cheap. You could do it with the Drained Leader for 90 points. So we're finally done with the heroes. Now on to the units. Stitched Zombies. 10 of them for 80 points. Quality 5, defense of 6, slow, and undead. They all have claws for 2 attacks. You can upgrade all the models with the Rising Dead for 25 points. The Rising Dead means that they have ambush and they can be deployed one inch away from enemy models. And you can upgrade three models to either be the Sergeant Musician or a Banner Bearer. And since this is the first time we've seen it, we'll talk about it. Sergeant means that one of your models gets plus one to hit. Musician means that your unit moves plus one inches. And Banner means that you get plus one on your morale tests. Now, Stitched Zombies. If you saw the other video that I put out earlier last week, you'll know that the army that I'm bringing is all Stitched Zombies. Why? Because they're cheap, and they come in hordes, and I love zombies. Taking a unit of 10 zombies, combining it to be 20 zombies, and giving them the Rising Dead is always something that will drive an enemy crazy as 20 undead bodies pop up right next to them. Like, oh no, we have to deal with this right now. That's about all I'm going to say about these. You guys will see how these units work out in the game that we have coming later on. So I'll just, I'll leave it there. Our next unit is Drained Soldiers. 10 of them for 80 points. Quality 5, defense of 5. They have the undead rule. They all have one attack with their hand weapons. And you can replace all their hand weapons with either halberds for rending or spears for counter. You can upgrade three of the models to be a sergeant, musician, or a banner. This is the bog standard infantry that you find pretty much in all Age of Fantasy armies. The quality 5, defensive 5, hand weapon, spear wielding bricks of infantry. These are going to be your kind of throwaway chaff units, but they can also be big bricks of area denial, especially with the spears. So every army has a basic infantry, and that is the Vampiric Undead Drain Soldiers. Next unit we come to is the Ghouls, 5 of them for 75 points, quality 4, defense of 5, regeneration, strider, and undead. They all have one attack apiece with their toxin claws with poison, and the unit has no upgrades. 
So this unit is just going to be something that can move through difficult terrain with Strider. With regeneration, they're going to be harder to kill. They're just a little bit of an upgrade on the basic infantry. You could put a Ghoul Champion with them for a little bit of synergy, but not much because the Ghoul Champion doesn't really give the unit he's with much. So these guys are going to kind of be a sneaky, sneaky running through the underbrush. Pop out and attack the enemy sort of unit. Our next unit is the Skeleton Guard. Five of them for 75 points, quality four, defensive four, protected and undead. They all come equipped with a cursed heavy sword for one attack, AP one with reap. You can replace all of the heavy swords with cursed heavy halberds, a cursed heavy mace, or a cursed heavy spear. All of them have reap, the spear gives them counter, the heavy mace, they get AP three, and the heavy halberd gives them rending. And then you could upgrade three models to either be the Sergeant, Musician, or the Banner. Now, what One Page Rules has done with the Vampiric Undead is the, the Skeletons are a more elite style of infantry compared to other games where the Skeletons are all just, you know, Skeletons are just piles of bone. In the OPR Vampiric Undead, the Skeletons are an elite style infantry. They're all, they all have AP1 on their most basic weapon. They all have protected, so... The, they're going to ignore an AP1 of the enemy. And with Reap on all of their weapons, it becomes rather interesting when the enemy has to roll a whole bunch of armor saves. What I would do with these guys if I was running Skeleton Guard is I would give them all heavy maces. Just because going from AP1 to AP3 is a huge thing and being allowed to do it for just 15 points is amazing. Form them up into a 10 Skeleton Guard brick, send them towards the enemy's heaviest stuff or towards an enemy objective that you know that you're going to have to fight to get there. Drained Archers. Five of them for 65 points, quality five, defensive five, undead. They each have a bow for one shot at 24 inches and they have a hand weapon that gives them one attack in close combat. You can upgrade them with a sergeant, musician, or a banner. Yes, in OPR, the undead have ranged weapons. These guys are going to be your basic bow unit, quality 5, one shot at 24 inches. They don't have an upgrade available to get them different weapons. These guys are going to be your chaff archers that you don't care if they die. They're cheap enough. But wait, we have a second ranged unit, and they're even better. The Skeleton Watch, five of them for 125 points, quality 4, defensive 4, protected and undead. They're all carrying crossbows for one attack at 24 inches with rending and one attack in close combat. They can be given a sergeant, musician, or a banner upgrade for the unit. These guys are pricier than your drained archers, but they are that much better because of the quality four. And where else can you get skeletons walking around with crossbows? Our next unit is zombie wolves. Five of them for 70 points, quality five, defensive five, fast, furious, scout, and undead. They each have two attacks apiece with their vicious bite, and the unit has no upgrades. Like all the other wolves and dogs that we see in the other armies, this one is going to be a melee missile. With the scout ability, they're going to be moved 12 inches before the game even starts, and then with fast, they're going to be able to reach things on turn one. So if you take zombie wolves, your two choices are either to throw them at the enemy to deal with immediately or skulk them around the sides to wait for the enemy to move out and hit them in a flank. And at 70 points, they're pretty cheap if you just want to run one of these units up the flank to where your enemy has to send something to deal with them. Maybe it's a whole lot more expensive than 70 points. In that case, you win that trade off hands down. Now we're on to cavalry units. Skeleton Knights, five of them for 105 points, quality four, defensive four, fast, impact one, protected, and undead. And they each have a lance for one attack with lance. So that means on a charge, they're going to be AP2. And you upgrade three models to be a sergeant, musician, or a banner. There's no upgrades on this squad. You're going to get lances, and you're going to want to charge the enemy because you have impact one on everything. And I don't know if I've gone over impact yet, so I'll go over it now. Impact attacks, in this case where it says impact one, whenever you charge the enemy, the models you get in base-to-base -base contact get that many attacks, they hit on a two. So let's say these five knights charge into five other models, they get in base-to-base -base contact, you get to roll five attacks. Hitting on a two, there's no AP involved with this, so the enemy just gets their normal armor save. I've done some pretty nasty cavalry charges in Age of Fantasy where the impact hits alone can just clear out a unit. Like, you don't even get to the lances yet. 
but the lances are there to give you some extra punch when you charge in, giving them AP2. Our other unit of cavalry are the Vampire Knights. Five of them for 135 points, quality three, defensive three, fast, furious, impact one, and undead. They're all equipped with a heavy hand weapon for one attack at AP1. You can switch out the heavy hand weapon for a heavy lance, which gives them AP1 and lance, and you can upgrade them with a sergeant, musician, or a banner. These guys are your heavy shock cavalry, especially with the quality three and the heavy lances. They're going to be able to mulch through pretty much the heaviest of enemies. They still get their impact hits, but for what these guys are going after, you're going to want to hit things that have like a three or a four armor save. The heavy lance is where you're going to be doing the most work. I personally love vampire knights. I have another version of a undead army, which is all vampire knights, and I made my own vampire walking around i made my own vampire infantry unit to go into it having quality three in age of fantasy is a huge thing and having defensive three on cavalry or pretty much any unit is also a huge thing these guys are going to be the elite of your army i mean they're vampires they're thousands of years old of course they're going to be the most elite of the army Next unit is Bat Swarms. Three of them for 120 points, quality five, defensive five, ambush, fast, flying, toughness three, and undead. They each have three attacks from swarm attacks, but there are no upgrades. So normally in the other armies, swarms are going to be used to block lanes for the enemy to move through. They're gonna be used to tie up the enemy. In the undead army, that's going to be doubly so with this unit because they have Ambush and Toughness 3 each, so you can drop them down on turn 2 and pretty much stop an enemy unit from moving through because they're going to have to chew through all 9 Toughness. And with the Undead rule, the Swarms are not going to break and run away. They're going to have to chew through all 9 of that Toughness. Or hope that you roll poorly on your Undead rule. But even then, a Swarm with a single wound left is still a model standing in the way. Then we have more bats, but these are big, giant bats. Three of them for 155 points, quality four, defensive five, ambush, flying, furious, toughness three, and undead. They all have three attacks with reap from their deadly fangs. The unit has no upgrades. So having ambush, flying, and furious, these guys are going to be used to drop down behind your enemy and charge into things that did not want to be charged. This unit is only 35 points more expensive than the Bat Swarms, so this unit can do the same thing that those Bat Swarms do, drop down in front of the enemy, force them to stop in their tracks, but this squad has the ability to do more damage back with the quality of Thor, Furious, and Reap. So you have a couple options to either drop them where the enemy doesn't want them to be, or you can drop this in front of a unit to force them to stop and deal with your giant bats, because they have the undead rule as well. They're going to have to chew through all nine of that toughness. Next unit is Ghoul Horrors. Three of them for 170 points. Quality four, defense of four. Regeneration, Strider, toughness three, and undead. Three attacks apiece with poison from their toxin claws. This is again going to be another unit that's going to be bogging down the enemy because these guys, instead of having ambush, they have regeneration. But with Strider, they can move to where they want to be through difficult terrain. They're going to ignore the difficult terrain rule, and that regeneration is going to make chewing through that nine toughness even harder. Now we're getting into some sledgehammer units here. Bat Horrors. Three of them for 215 points. Quality three, defensive four. Ambush, flying, furious, toughness three, and undead. Three attacks apiece with reap from their deadly fangs. What this unit does it does the same thing the giant bats did, but this one does it in style because they have quality of three. They're going to cause a whole lot more damage. So instead of using this unit to stop the enemy from moving through something, this is the squad that you're going to want to drop somewhere and charge into the enemy because they're going to be doing a whole lot of damage with their quality of three. They're going to be hitting a whole lot more of their attacks. And the point cost reflects that. And our last troop unit is the Werewolves. Three of them for 225 points, quality three, defensive four, scout, strider, toughness three, and undead. They have three attacks with AP1 and rending from their heavy rending claws. And you can replace all the heavy rending claws with heavy hand weapons for three attacks at AP2. So with scout and strider, they're going to ignore difficult terrain. They're going to be able to go 12 before the game starts. These guys are a wrecking ball. 
quality three with the ability to have AP one and rending or AP two, depending on which you put on the squad. They're gonna be able to do some serious work and they're gonna be able to do it fast. Kind of in a first wave where your other zombie wolves are hitting them, your werewolves can come up right behind and slam into the enemy as well. Now on to creatures and vehicles. Bat Beast, 165 points, quality three, defensive three, ambush, fear one, flying, furious, toughness six, and undead. Six attacks with reap from its deadly fangs. And this unit has no upgrades. So this is going to be something that you hold over your enemy's head that where this can ambush in and it's going to have lots of attacks that are going to hit most of the time with quality three. They are going to be worried about things that they leave behind. Things that are going to leave a pocket to allow you to drop in a bat beast. They're only 165 points. So this model is very cheap for something to put that thought into the head of your enemy that you better not leave a hole, otherwise you're gonna get Batwing right in the back. You could also step that up to a Bat Dragon for 320 points. Quality three, defensive three, fear two, furious flying, toughness 12 and undead, eight attacks with reap from its deadly fang, and four attacks with AP one from stomp. The unit has no upgrades. So this is going to do the same thing that the Bat Beast did, except better. It's going to be scarier because it has more fear attached to it and more attacks with more damage potential. This is going to take more of an investment. So in a lower point game, 320 points might be worth it. Instead of taking a bat beast, put in a bat dragon. That way it's scarier to the enemy and you could dedicate more stuff to like your forward attack or your regenerating corpse pile as it rolls forward. Or if you just really like big scary stuff, you could take a zombie dragon for 325 points. Quality four, defense of three. Comes with a breath attack, fear two, flying, regeneration, toughness 12, and undead. Six attacks with AP one from its heavy claw or four attacks at AP one with its stomp. This guy does not have ambush, so he's going to start on the board and just be a flying magnet for everything the enemy is going to throw at him but he does have regeneration and toughness 12 so you're going to be able to weather a lot of that storm now me personally i don't like running zombie dragons on their own i really like it when i put a vampire on top of the zombie dragon that way it gives the whole thing quality three and you get some other benefits like five up furious and some extra attacks from like a lance but if you're going with a zombie dragon theme go for a zombie dragon theme in a huge point game, take three zombie dragons, take three vampires on zombie dragons, take ghouls on bat dragons, go crazy. Now we're gonna talk about chariots. The vampiric undead have four different types of chariots and the first one is the maiden chariot. 135 points, quality four, defensive three, fast, impact four, seduce, toughness six, and undead. Two attacks from its crew and two attacks from the hoofs of the horses that are dragging it. Now this thing has the seduce rule, which we talked about all the way at the beginning, so I'll tell you about it again. Once per activation before attacking, pick one enemy unit within 12, which must take a morale test. If failed, you may move it by up to six in any direction. You can use the Maiden Chariot to bring an enemy unit closer to you to get charged by one of your other damage dealing units, or you could use the Maiden Chariot to sit on an objective. And if the enemy also has something on that objective contesting it, the Maiden Chariot can seduce them and tell them, no, no, walk away. This is my objective, not yours. You don't need it. Next, we come to the Funeral Coach. Next, we come to the Funeral Coach. 140 points, quality 4, defensive 3, fast, fear 1, impact 4, toughness 6, and undead. Comes with two attacks with AP2 from its heavy crew attack and two attacks with the hoofs of the horses with no upgrades. This is more of a combat chariot. You're looking at it mostly for the four impact hits and then the AP2 on the heavy crew attack. No other special rules to talk about because it just doesn't have any other special rules. So this is going to be slamming into the enemy and fight until it falls apart with its toughness six and undead. The next chariot is the Deathly Chariot for 155 points, quality four, defensive three, fast, frightful gaze, impact four, toughness six and undead. Comes with two attacks, AP1 from its heavy crew attack and two attacks from the hoofs of the horses. Again, this is a combat chariot, but with the frightful gaze, it does have the ability to give whatever it's charging minus two to its morale test. 
This chariot is going to be used to break open the enemy's battle line, pick a unit, give it frightful gaze, charge in, do some damage, hopefully win combat, and then make them break and run. Then finally, our last unit is the Corpse Wagon. 230 points, quality 5, defense of 3, fear 1, regeneration, spawn stitched zombies 10, toughness 6, and undead. Has 8 attacks from its crew, and it can be upgraded with a cursed lodestone, an unholy brazier, or a corpse pile. Now this one's got lots of special rules attached to it. Let's start at the top. It has regeneration, and it can also do the same thing that the drained leader could do. It spawns 10 zombies. That's going to be why this thing's point value is so high, because it comes equipped with 10 stitch zombies sitting inside of it for you to drop out once per game, wherever you want, within 6 inches of the wagon. The Cursed Lodestone is once per activation, pick one friendly caster within six, which gets plus one to its next spell casting roll. So it can support your other casters moving forward. The Unholy Brazier. When taking a wound, roll one die, and on a six plus, it is ignored. If the wound was from a spell, then it is ignored on a two plus instead. So that is an additional get out of damage free card along with regeneration so it has its defensive three a five up regeneration and then a six up unholy brazier if you really really want this to be tough and stick it around put that on it and then there's the corpse pile once per activation pick one friendly unit within six which gets regeneration next time it takes wounds that is a big one for the corpse wagon it can follow around a friendly unit and just hand out regeneration to it every turn so that is it for the Vampiric Undead Army list. There might be more added in the near future as they finish up the Vampiric Undead on Patreon. I know they were talking about a fat stitched together zombie, which I was waiting for, but I, I can't wait any longer. I really want to play this game. So if it does come out, you'll see it added to my army list. And the army I have for the game today is a zombie army. It consists of three units of 20 zombies, all led by drained leaders that can drop more zombies, with corpse carts that drop more zombies. That doesn't even add up to 2,000 points total, so I put, I kind of broke the rules, sue me, but it's my channel, I can do what I want. Mahaha. <laughs> so I put 20 more zombies in the army that have the rising dead ability, so they're going to pop up within one inch of the enemy. Just so I can get it to 2,000 points, I'm sure later on I'm going to add in those fat zombies, move some points around. It'll, so it'll be a totally competitive, valid rules, OPR 2,000 point army. But for right now, we're going to kind of play a little narrative with it. I could have swapped it out for like a vampire on a, a winged something to have a necromancer rolling around with like caster 3, but I wanted to keep the theme alive. So with that... We're going to go ahead and black out here and go right to the army where I'm sure I'm going to tell you about everything and show you my thoughts and why I made the army the way I did. Hey everybody, welcome out to the garage. What you're seeing in front of you is my George Romero old school monster movie inspired zombies. All done in a black and white color scheme with the only color being all the necromantic magic being thrown around by the characters and a little bit on the corpse cards. So, like I said, we have one, two, three squads of 20 that are going to be starting on the board, each led by a drained leader who have the spawning ability, three corpse carts that all have the corpse pile that will give each of these squads regeneration as they march across the board. And then those 20 guys back there are going to pop up from ambush using from below or from the depths, whatever that is called. And then over here is my pile of zombies to summon as the game goes along. So I'll pop up the list so everyone can see that we are semi in the rules. But like I said, this isn't really an official list because I have one too many units of zombies. So, uh, yeah, like I said, it's my channel. I'm going to do what I want. Then their opponent today is the Duchies of Vinci. We've had this army on the channel before, but I have done a little bit of upgrading. As you can see, I have one extra heavy cavalry who's going to be a leader on cavalry. We have the tank the artillery, and a couple of new leaders. So I'll flash up the list so everyone can take a look at it. And then we're going to get down to the game. So this is our board today. We have six objectives on the field, kind of all in no man's land. I had to put a little tilt on it just because, I don't know, having the 
six of them all straight across the board did not feel right. So we are going to play from the short board edges this time. Yes, I know. Sometimes even old guys can change. And for our mission, we are going to be using the mission cards. Once again, there are going to be five cards in each hand. At the end of the turn, you're going to be able to score as many points as you can and then draw up to five cards remaining. And you're also allowed to discard one card per turn if it's something that you don't think you're going to be able to achieve. So for the undead deployment, it's pretty straightforward. Zombies, cart. Zombies, cart. Zombies and cart. And for the duchies, the tank is anchoring the flank. Drones, heavy cav, artillery, city guard, brutes, city guard, automa drones. I forgot what they're called. So for our objectives, the undead have charge, seize six, seize three, seize two, and seize two. The duchy's objectives are seize five, hold four, delve deep, take no prisoners, and seize five. Hey, Mr. Dice Goblin. What? Who do you want to win? Zombies. The zombies? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and roll for them. Oh, how many dice? Just roll one dice. You get a six, and the duchies get a three, so the zombies are going to go first. So I got the grot out here tonight playing Dice Goblin. He's going to pick up anything that I drop or anything that falls off the board because he just loves playing with dice. So he's rooting for the zombies. As you heard, he rolled the dice. The zombies went first. So first activation of the game, we're going to have this cart. He's going to activate and give these guys regeneration. That'll be what these are this game. And then all the way on this hard flank, on the opposite flank over here for the duchies, the tank is going to go six inches, which is going to be enough to put his nose on the objective, and then he's going to fire all of his fun stuff at that squad of zombies. So he's got the big crossbow on top, which only has an 18-inch range. So seeing as he started 24 apart and he only moved six, that's going to be out of range. But he does have the cannon, so three shots hitting on the floor. We got two hits. Saving on a six. We got two fails. Right. That's going to be two zombies. Bloop, just gone. The corpse card in the center is going to use a hold action and give regeneration to that squad. So all three of the duchies leaders have at the double. What we're going to do is we're going to activate this squad who is going to tell the other city guard squad to move six inches. And then they're going to move six inches themselves. So it's going to look something like that. So it's hard to get an angle where you can't see the terrible floors over here. But these crossbows are 24 inch range. They're going to fire these zombies here. So the crossbows are 24 inch range. They are going to fire and they're going to hit all the four. Because all the city guard have good shot. Now there were some raining hits in there, which doesn't matter in this particular case. Because the squad has the AP1 upgrade. And the zombies are going to be saving out of six anyway. So six is the save which is nothing. And then with the rending on the crossbows, they don't get a regeneration. That was a total of seven zombies. There's three, four, five, six, seven. Now for another zombies activation and this squad's gonna get regeneration. After this, now they're gonna be able to do something. Back on the duchy's front, this squad leader is gonna tell these guys to double time it for six inches. And then they are gonna move six inches themselves to there. And then this squad of city guards is going to fire at that squad of zombies. So it's going to be 12 shots hitting on a four, just like last time. And then the zombies save on a six. Ooh, we got a couple saves, so only four go down. So we lose one, two, three, four. Zombies over here on this far flank, they're going to move as fast as they can, which isn't really much because they are slow to there. All right, so I looked it up. The corpse pile rule, it's the next time they take wounds. So these guys have taken a wound. These guys in the middle have taken a wound while they've been regenerated. But this squad on this flank, they got regenerated after they took a wound. So they technically still have regeneration. So over here behind all that, there is the dice goblin walking around with his piles of dice. We are going to have the leader in this squad is going to tell the drones to 
double time it. So they're gonna go six and then they're also going to activate and I will show you where they end up. So the drones ended up standing in the bush. They got fly so they don't care that our heavy cav have moved just far enough to be out of charge range of these zombies here in the corner. Zombie unit in the center are going to go as fast as they can. Pass the objective here. Like that. And then Mr. Drained Leader here. So move the camera because this Drained Leader is going to poop out zombies right here in front of this squad. Like that. So now they have a new front line of zombies who can then activate on their own. Back to the duchies over here. Autumn Guard are going to go six inches to there. Let's see if they're in range. Their, their short bows only have 12 inch range. We got two in range. So it's just the two shots hitting on a four. One failed. And saving on a six. And one zombie goes down. Not very much, but every little chip hurts. So here in the center, these zombies are going to do what zombies do best and charge in. Brains. They end up like that. Our first zombie attack is going to be 20 attacks hitting out of 5. So we got 7 hits and then the city guard are saving out of 4. So that will be 5 dead city guard. Their attacks back hitting on a 5 because they are a good shot which means they shoot at 4. Well, they only have a quality of five, so we got two hits. And the zombies save on a six. Two fails. So we've lost two zombies, but we've had two, three, four, five of the city guard go down. They do have the leader, so they are technically above half, but they still have to take a morale test. So morale test, the leader has a quality of four, so we're going on a four. They fail, so they are going to be pinned. So looking around for a pin marker, I can't use my normal pin marker because those are the regen markers in this game. So I'm going to use my Battlefleet Gothic Blast markers. So they are pinned. Now for the duchies, we are going to have our artillery with a name I cannot pronounce. It's like the, the Rumpelstiltskin cannon. I'm sure everyone's yelling at me about that. The rest, rest, whatever. It's going to fire at that unit of zombies. So it's going to be six shots hitting on a four. Only two hits. Zombie save on a six. Gonna be two dead zombies. So there goes, bloop, two. So this would normally be our last activation for the zombies, but it's not gonna be, because these guys are gonna go forward eight inches. So that's where they are gonna sit, and then we're going to do the thing where this guy, he's gonna drop 10 zombies right there in front of the heavy calf. Now the duchy's turn are drones, which haven't actually activated yet. They have a range of 12, and they don't want to really get into this mess. So they're just going to come off of the bush, put themselves there so they can shoot at those zombies that just showed up. So these little drones have two shots apiece. That's going to be 20 shots. Hitting on a four. Once again, rending does not matter because these zombies are squishy. Saving on a six. One save. So that'll be eight zombies that go down. That's going to be eight, leaving two to stand up against the heavy cav. They do need to make their undead check. So without a leader, they need to pass a morale test on a five. Oh, Lord, they do. All right. So these two zombies that are left over, this will be the last activation for the undead. They're going to charge into those drones because they were not able to get outside of eight inches. So it's going to be four attacks and the zombies hitting on a five. Ooh, two hits. Saving on a five. Ooh, they lose two drones. The drones are going to attack back, hitting on a five. I was wrong. Drones hit on a four. So that will be three hits. Zombie saves on a six. Save one, but those two is enough to kill off the squad. Ooh, one or two. And last activation for turn number one. Our brutes are going to go six inches. End up on this objective here. And then they are going to fire into the zombies. So the brutes have four shots apiece for 12 shots hitting on a four. Seven hits, saving on a six. Ooh, we got two saves, so that'll be five dead zombies. So one, two, three, four, five. It means you got one zombie left. Let's see if he sticks around. Morale test with a lone zombie. 
He fails. Undead test. He also fails. So he's going to go away. So that one long zombie crumples into the dirt. Time for objectives. The duchies were able to do seize five. Take no prisoners. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't add them up. So we'll see. We're going to hold on to this. Maybe we'll get the big one later. Delve deep. No, we don't have that one. Hold four. You got to hold it at the beginning of the end. And it's only turn one. So no. And then the other C's five. They got it. So that'll be two points for the duchies. Their new objectives are going to be hold the line and hold three. Time for the zombies. They achieve C's two twice. They did not achieve C's three, but they did achieve C's thick. They did achieve C's six, but they have yet to kill anything. They have yet to kill an entire unit in melee. The zombies' new objectives are cut them down, C's three, and big game hunter. So they're going to have to try to kill that tank. So the zombies over here, I think the duchies were betting that they were gonna get the first turn. But no, these zombies are going to charge eight inches. So they're gonna end up in a mess like this. First we're gonna do our drained leader, three attacks, hitting on a five, we got two hits. Saving on a five. One wound so far. And then we have 34 zombie attacks. Hitting on a five. And they're gonna save on a three. Ooh. Somehow the zombies are able to cause seven wounds. So that means he's down to two. The leader and him are gonna attack now. So everything all together is going to be eight attacks. We're gonna add in the lances. We're gonna add in the, the horns from the boars. We're gonna add in the limited attacks from the saw drone that the leader's supposed to have. AP doesn't matter, lance doesn't matter. Everyone's gotta save up a six in that squad. So hitting on a four. It was four hits, saving on a six. Nothing. So they lose four zombies, but the zombies win the combat. So we're gonna have to do a morale test. They need a four up to stay. And they fail, the heavy cav is gonna run off the board. I don't know why I always have high hopes for the heavy cav and they always let me down. As I was giving them their three inch wiggle, I forgot they have regeneration. So, we get two zombies back. Over on the opposite flank, we're going to have the city guard to tell these guys to move forward with the double time. And they're going to commence Operation Robot Shield while this squad fires at those zombies there. From the city guard, it's going to be 12 shots hitting on a four. Oh, it was five hits. It wasn't that bad. So, uh, they are going to, so the zombies are going to save on a six. They fail them all. So that'll be five more zombies down. Two, three, four, five, leaving us with eight. So that'll be a morale test. The drained leader has the same quality of the zombies. So looking for a five and we fail. Let's see how many crumble into the dust with the undead rule on a one to three, they crumble on a four to six, they stick around. So it looks like we lose four. So another one, two, three, four. Oh, we're getting light. So we're gonna go ahead and activate those zombies before they disappear. They are going to charge into this unit here. But also, this guy still has a unit of zombies in his pocket. So he's gonna go forward his eight inches into the charge range. And then he's gonna poop out a unit of zombies right there. So we're gonna start with the drained leader hitting out five. Whiff. Then the rest of the zombies hitting out a five. One hit. The Atoma Guard saves on a five. Oh, they get one. So the Atoma Guard have a quality of four, so they hit on a four in combat. Oof. They got six hits out of nine rolls, saving on a six for the zomb. Well, hold on, I gotta do this different. So we got three zombies, three dead zombies, and now all on the drained leader, saving on a five. He takes one wound, which means he loses combat, fails his morale test, and promptly crumbles into the dust. So that is the leader and his three zombie buddies. All right, so over here, before those become a problem, these 
Ottoman guard, they are just going to move onto the objective, give themselves a nice footprint on it, and they're going to fire into those zombies there. So it's going to be nine shots hitting out of four. Three hits. This makes up for their stellar combat. So then saving out of six, three dead zombies. All right, so it's going to be three gone zombies. So in the center, these zombies are going to charge into the city guard. So it's going to end up looking like that. So we're going to start off with the leader hitting on a five. Nothing. 32 attacks from the rest of the zombies hitting on a five. Ooh, too many for the box. Hold on. One, two, re-roll. There we go. So it's nine hits saving out of four. Not too bad. One, two, only two. So six attacks back. Since they are pinned, they're only going to be hitting on a six. They still end up with two hits. AP doesn't matter because the zombies suck. Saving on a six. Nothing. So there goes two zombies. And it would be a tie combat, but because this guy has the I Summon Zombies ability, gives him fear one or fear two, I forgot. But either way, they're going to win combat. And these guys, because they are pinned, they automatically fail the morale test, which means they are gone. And then the zombies for winning combat get a three-inch wiggle, which puts them to about there on top of objective three. Next activation, the tank here is going to rumble forward six inches. Then he is going to fire upon the corpse cart in the back. So the tank firing at the corpse cart, our first shot is going to be the big crossbow on top. Six shots hitting on a four. Ooh, it is rending, but we did not get any rending hits. So saving on a three. Corpse cart's going to take one wound. Then with his cannons, three shots hitting on a four. Okay, two hits. These are not rending. That would have been nice there with those two sixes. AP2, so the corpse cart saves on a five. Failed them both. Then it has regeneration. Saves them both. So with that one wound it took, it is down to five. So over on the opposite flank, these zombies are going to do the charging and the chewing. Something like that. So our zombies, there are seven of them, so it'll be 14 attacks hitting on a five. Not bad. Five hits, saving on a four. Ooh, it'll be four dead city guard. So the city leader is going to attack first. He has three attacks, hitting on a four. We got two hits. Saving on a six. Saved one. And then the city guard hitting on a five. We got two hits. Saving on a six. So we lose three. Believe it or not, the zombies have won combat. They only lost three, and the city guard lost four. Morale for the city guard. They're going to fail, so they are pinned. So they bet the zombies back up, and then these guys are pinned. Next up, we are going to have the Ottoman drones fire at that big unit of zombies. So there's still ten drones, twenty shots, hitting on a four. As I missed the box. Oh, Lord. Turns out that was statistically average. There was just a whole bunch of five sixes and ones and twos. So, saving on a six. So, I was going to lose seven zombies. One, two, three. Come here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Leaving us with three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, that's going to be a morale test. I prefer a five up to pass. Hey, they pass. The corpus cart's going to come off of the hill and smack into the Ottoman guard. No, the corpus cart has eight attacks hitting on a five. Two hits. The Ottoman Guard save on a five. Two down. Seven attacks back. So that was four hits. Saving on a three. Failed two. But the corpse cart comes with regeneration. Still takes two. Oh, it was a tied combat, but the corpse cart has fear of one, so that means that it wins by one. So the Ottoman Guard need a morale test. And they pass. And I'm not sure if it was supposed to be before it attacks, but it's going to poop out 10 zombies right about there. They're all going to pop out like that. And also, it's going to put regeneration on them because they're the best one to do it for. Here in the middle, the brutes are going to slam into this squad of zombies here. 
they each have three attacks hitting on a four. We ended up with five hits. AP again doesn't matter because zombies save on a six. Ooh, one of them saves. That'll be four dead zombies. So the drained leader, three attacks hitting on a five. One hit. AP two, so they save on a five. Ooh, one wound. 20 attacks from the zombies hitting on a five. Eight hits, saving on a three. They take three more. So they did four wounds, so that'll be enough to take out one. And take one of them down to two wounds. And because, again, this guy with his fear stick, the zombies win combat. So they pass their morale on a four. They are Automa. So that means they have the same rule as the undead. And they have five wounds left. They're going to take three more. So that'll be one, two, three, three. There we go. Wow. I, okay, the zombie's kind of potent in numbers. So our next remaining carts over here is going to go 12 inches. Well, they're going to go far enough to be able to keep their butt on the objective. Five wounds left. If I can find a number. Then it poops out 10 zombies with regeneration. Last activation for the duchies, our artillery piece that I still can't pronounce, is going to fire into those zombies. Six shots hitting on a four. Four hits. Saving on a six. That'll be three dead zombies. So morale test for the zombies, because that took them below half. And they pass. Last corpse cart here in the middle is going to go 12 to still be on the objective. And it's going to poop out 10 zombies, which have regeneration. And now I get to activate all three of the zombie squads that just showed up. These zombies over here are going to rar, 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 rar. 10 zombies, 20 attacks, hitting on five. The Automa Guard save on a five. So four dead Automa Guard. Three of them left, they're gonna attack back, hitting on a four. One hit. Saving on a six. One dead zombie, but the zombies win combat. The Autumn Guard pass on a four. They fail. So there are three left. They have the Automa rule, which is the same as the undead rule. And one more is gonna go away. Our squad in the middle, they are going to go into this guy. And I'm going to see how many I can get in combat. So I was able to get all 10 of them within 2 inches or a base within a base. So we're going to have 20 attacks hitting on a 5. As I missed the box with one. We end up with 5 hits. He saves on a 3. He loses 2, which is just enough. So there you go. There's his, his dice that I moved out the way. Bye, buddy. And then they're going to wiggle that direction. And finally, last activation for this turn, these 10 zombies that were just spawned are going to launch themselves at the tank. Like that. So, 20 attacks hitting on a 5. The tank is going to save on a 2. He still takes... Ooh, still takes 2. And the tank itself has a fear of 2, so combat is going to end up tied. They ended up with 7, and then these guys had to back up. So for the duchies, hold three. They currently do not have three at all. They got no units there at all. Hold the line. The only person that's still in their deployment zone is the artillery. Hold four. That's on the other side of the board. Delve deep. They have nothing that far into enemy territory. And take no prisoners. I don't think they won a melee the whole turn. Let alone by three or more wounds. So we're going to say they didn't score anything. So they are going to get rid of hold four. And their new objective is seize one. So for the zombies this turn, charge. Yes, they were actually able to destroy three enemy units in melee. The one unit of city guard, the unit of brutes, and the unit of heavy cavalry. Seize three. Yes, they have seize three for another point. They did not score Big Game Hunter yet. Seize three for another point. And cut them down. They score two points because they did destroy three units. Their new objectives are on the march. Terrify. Hold one. And area dominance.
at the beginning of turn three, the big brick of 20 zombies that was hiding in the mud pop up on objective number one. First activation of turn number three, the Dutchies is going to send their little whirly birds over here. One, to get away from the craziness on objective five and these drones. Well, the grap was back around some terrain. These drones are going to fire on this squad right here. So 10 drones, it's going to be 20 attacks, hitting on a four. Nine hits, saving on a six. One save. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one on the leader. Leader has to take a test, which he fails. And he's going to be down to one wound. So all these guys go away. And one more left. So with the zombies, all of the zombies are out. It is just time to brute force. We are going to have these 10 charge right back into the tank. 20 attacks on a five. Saving on a two. It only failed one armor save, but that tank has fear of two. So technically the tank won combat, so morale test for the zombies, they pass miraculously. So this guy drops down to six and the zombies just back up and say, let's, let's try again later. In the center, the artillery piece is gonna fire into the zombies directly in front of it, figuring that its time is now measured in seconds. Big shots hitting on a four. Four hits, saving on a six. So three dead zombies. Not even enough to force a morale test. Over here, these zombies are going to charge into combat here. 16 attacks, hitting on a five. Ooh, saving on a five. That's gonna be enough to take out those last two. Pop, pop. The tank is going to activate and just kind of nestle himself fully onto objective number five. And then he's going to shoot at this squad with the leader in it. I'm just gonna group all of his attacks together because AP don't matter and uh, rending doesn't matter either. So eight shots hitting on a four. Oh, as I missed the box. Saving on a six. Saves two. The zombies only lose three. But that will be enough to force a test onto those zombies. Morale test time, we're looking for a five to stay alive. Oh, they get it, oh good lord. These zombies are gonna jump into that gun. 14 attacks, hitting on a five. Five hits, five up save. It takes four wounds, which means that gun is uh, kaput. Oof, well, there we go. The only Dutchy unit left to activate are the city guard, and they're just going to uh, recover. And then get jumped on by 20 zombies. So we're going to do two batches of 20. First batch hitting on a five. And second batch, same thing. So 11 hits, save on a four. Oh, they didn't do too bad. They only lose two. Wow. First the leader on a four. Two hits. One dead zombie. Then the rest on five, two hits, two dead zombies. So the zombies lost combat. So the zombies need to pass morale test on a five. And they fail. So this is the downside of undead. They lose three, fail the morale test. Now they need to make 17 undead saves. They lose another seven. Ooh, that cut that zombie squad in half. Now the duchies are done, the zombies get to activate whatever they want. We're just going to start here and move our way that direction. So we got four zombies charging into that same squad. Eight attacks on the five. We got two hits and two dead city guard. Their attacks back, the leader on a six because they are fatigued. One hit, one dead zombie, and the two other guys on a six. Nothing. So then morale test for the city guard. They pass. Yeah, one dead zombie, and then they back up. I swear, it's all because I gave this guy this the gold faceplate. He's holding on. And then over here, this squad of zombies is also going to charge into the tank. It's time for pick on the big guy. Drain leader on a five. 
<laughs> Triple ones. You don't want to hit nothing. Then 12 attacks from the zombies on a five. Only three hits, saved on a two. Saved all three. So the tank takes no damage, but because it is fear two, it wins combat. And the zombies fail their morale test. Undead roll for all of them. Well, they only lose two. Yeah, it could have been worse all around. The corpse cards hold, hold, hold. And for the duchies, they score nothing. They're going to get rid of hold three, and they're going to pick up hold six. And for the zombies, they score on the march because there is nobody left in their deployment zone. They do not, oop, they do not score terrify. They don't score hold one because that's where the fighting is going on right now. They do score area dominance for two points, and they don't score big game hunter yet. They're not going to discard anything, and they're going to pick up C's four and total dominance to capture all objective markers, which this might be the first time we see that happen. Turn one, all of our little drones are going to move on to objective number three. They're going to fire that squad of zombies. 20 shots hitting on a four. 12 hits, saving on a six. Only kills on a six. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Leaving one zombie left. Does that one doofus pass his morale test? He does. You're a very lucky doofus. We're gonna have these 10 zombies charge into the tank again. 20 attacks hitting on a five. Saving on a two. Morale test for those zombies. They pass. The tank is just gonna say he's had enough and he's gonna ram into that squad of 10 zombies. It's impact hits hitting on a two. Four hits. Saving on a six. That's gonna be four dead zombies. Six zombies attacking back, only hitting on a six. We got one hit. Save it on a two. Oh, it takes a wound. But morale test for the zombies. They fail. There are six left. Now there are five left. So this guy goes down to five, but one, two, three, four, five zombies croak. Let's keep this party going. Let's uh, have these four zombies in the lead. Dive in on the tank. Three attacks from the drained leader, hitting on a five. One hit. It is AP two, so saving on a four. It fails, it takes one wound. Six attacks from the remaining zombies on a five. Ooh, we got four hits. And twos to save. Oh, it takes two more wounds. That takes the big guy down to two, and now it is time for it to do a morale test. Morale test on a four. Oh no! As the tank decides it has had enough and takes off running from the board. The city guard are the last thing to activate for the Vinci's. They're gonna fire here. We got two hits, one dead zombie. Morale test, which they fail. One zombie left. And then these guys are gonna charge there. 20 attacks on a five. Saving on a four. Well, we gotta break it up because of the character fours. One dead. Two dead. And the character is still alive with three wounds. So his attacks back, three hits. Three dead zombies, which means they lose combat. Fail their morale test. And lose two more. And with that, everything else on the board is going to hold because it's not going to change a thing. So for the Dutchies, the only thing they actually score is take no prisoners. That tank pulling off its impact hits was able to win by more than three wounds. And the zombies were not able to pull off total domination. They were able to score C's four. 
They were able to score big game hunter, even though it was a nine, it was not the big one. They still don't hold one, but they were able to pull off Terrify for one victory point. So the final score of three to 15, the Vampiric Undead are the winners. Now this game was a marathon. I'm going to have to keep it short because my batteries are going to die. This is one of my favorite themes of an army is bringing just massive amounts of crap and seeing if the enemy can chew through it. I really thought the duchies with their rending weapons were going to be able to tear through all of the regeneration on the army, but there was just too many wounds for them to tear through all of it or even enough of it to really make a difference. The corpse carts weren't even really touched after turn number one. And just the speed that the zombies can achieve, even though they are a slow army, but just to move forward, summon more zombies six inches ahead of you, and then those can activate and charge another eight inches, that is incredible. That actually wasn't even something I thought of when I made the army list. I just thought you could move forward and drop zombies behind you to hold objectives. No, no, that's an offensive, that's an offensive thing. Oh, good lord. So even though this army was not 100% legit because I added in that extra 20 zombies that could ambush, I don't even think this army needed them. I would love to get those replaced with some of those fat stitched zombies or even bat horrors or something else along those same points. I'm, I'm not 100% sure what the points are on that squad. I think it's somewhere around like 215 points for those 20 zombies. But you could easily achieve that with something else. So yeah, that is going to be our look at age of fantasy for this week i believe next week we are going to switch back to grimdark future and then after that switch back to age fantasy coming up next week is going to be the